Welcome back, everybody. It's me, Burrito, and right now we're in front of the Hall of Governance, aka City Hall, in Moss Eisley. We will be doing a few Legends exclusive things today, and something that's not specific to Legends, but I wanted to start with something a little bit of a different speed, which is the Master Politician quest series that they added with City Update 2.0. So, previously, if you wanted to get Master Pol- if you wanted to unlock Politician to become a Master, all you would have to do uh, in an NGE era of the game is drop a house and declare residency in it, but you can see that I don't even have the Politician box available to me yet. And if we go to my personal and my skill, you can see wow, I have a home. It doesn't even unlock the box for me. As this character was created and the City Update 2.0 was implemented uh, prior to this character's creation or prior to this character owning a house. So this is what characters would look like when they're new now. So even if you declare, you don't unlock Politician immediately. What does Politician allow you to do? Legends is adjusted a little bit, but it's mostly the same stuff, which is mostly for city management things. So if you are somebody who either wants to be a mayor, wants to help with a city's militia management, etc., you're going to want to do this quest series. For everybody else, you don't have to worry about it. It does give some unique rewards that we'll talk about and that I will show later, uh, or as we get them more specifically. This quest series I have done once already. It took me about 30 minutes going really slow. It's probably going to take about that time as well as I'll be reading it. Uh, reading all the dialogue aloud for everybody. But let's go ahead and get started. We can start by going into the Moss Isley City Hall, as I stated. And we can see the mayor standing here. We'll talk to him. And then we'll have an option that says, Can you tell me something about being a politician? Of course I can. I am happy to tell, eat, tell and teach you everything I know. Perfect. Where do we start? The key virtue of a good politician is to listen to your fellow citizens. And you're just in luck. I want to do a tour today of Moss Eisley and talk with the local citizens about issues they are currently facing in the city. I think it might be a good idea for you to do this and learn from it. Report back to me when you are done, bub. Understood. I'll do my best. See you soon. See you. And then we get a quest to help the mayor, and we will get an architect's tradition of a house. Wow. We have the quest to help the mayor. Um, He did mention that, uh, you know... He wanted to do this tour, but now we're doing it as a learning experience, so he kind of more uh, delegated it. That's the sign of a strong politician. Either way, we are here with the first disgruntled citizen, who says, Oh, uh, hello, how are you? And then I'll reply, I'm fine, thanks. Do you have an opinion on the city and the mayor? There is so much scum and villainy in this blasted city. What is the mayor doing about it? Uh, I could say I'm sure the mayor is doing everything in his power to increase the amount of police officers patrolling the city and cracking down on crime. I'll forward your concerns to him, though. Yeah, whatever. Goodbye. Uh, well, the mayor is an excellent recruiter because, I mean, look at that. There's a dead one right there. But uh, that has not stopped people from signing up for the Moss Eisley police force. So he's good at recruiting. Maybe this the effectiveness could be tuned. Either way, here's our second citizen. Hello there, you look like a friendly face. What are you up to? I was asked to participate in some community outreach in Moss Isley. Are there issues you'd want the mayor to know about? I'm not one to complain, but this place is too hot, you know. I gotta wear my hot pants to survive. I understand. I'll relay that to the mayor. But you do know this is Tatooine, right? Bye. And then uh, she gives me an unknown salute. Wow. I was just trying to help, lady. Either way, let's go on to our next citizen who's right over here in front of this good old guild hall. Who says, yeah, what do you want, nerf herder? Wow, rude. Hey, watch the language. I'm just here to see what's going on. I'm angry. That's what's going on. Can you tell me why? The water pumps in my district are broken, and we haven't had any fresh water in two days. Why would I pay taxes if nobody fixes the repairs at the public... <laughs> or fixes and repairs the public utilities? That's a major issue. I will tell the mayor immediately. Yeah, please do, and tell him I won't pay any more credits if they don't get repaired. Okay, well, that's a, the, probably like, well, uh, the scum and villainy issue is a major one, but just the availability of public utilities is a big one. Well, here's somebody else who looks to be doing the same thing right now. Speaking with this disgruntled citizen, which, by the way, are these guys normally in the game? These Cyclops? Either way, he says, hmm. Say hello, can I get you to tell how you feel about the city? 
The work here is hard, yeah? I'm just a farmer. We need more vaporators. More underground moisture farms. Everything. Let the mayor know, please. I will. I appreciate you letting me know, and hopefully he gets the to it quick. Wow. All right. Well, thanks again. I need to get back to work. We can talk more about any about at my farm if you need me. We were never we are not going to his farm, by the way. That was a nice invitation, but we will not be uh heading out there. Let's go talk to the last citizen who is on the north side of the city. Which we will be up here on the north end later, as while this quest line does not require any combat, so it is doable by any profession of any level. Uh, we will be doing something later that will take us up here that, uh, you know, a little bit higher level and a little bit more combat required. But this citizen says, what are you doing? What do you want? If you're selling something, I can't afford it. Go away. I say, well, slow down. I'm just trying to get their feedback on what Moss Isley can, or what Moss Isley can do to help its citizens. The taxes in the city are so high, I can't afford my rent anymore. If the mayor doesn't do anything about it, I'll have to leave Moss Isley. I'm sorry, experiencing this, I'll let the mayor know about your concern with the taxes. You do that, but I don't have any high hopes. They're probably collecting money to build a new casino, as if the lucky despot isn't enough. Pa. Alright. Average Moss Isley citizen. To be fair, I don't know how many Moss Isley citizens actually give a shit about taxes. Not getting shot. That's probably higher on their list. We are back here with the mayor. You're back, Mom. Have you talked to the local citizens? I've talked to some of the citizens. A few had some concerns about the city. Do tell. Well, to start, one of your citizens has concern about the taxes are too high in the city. Maybe you should consider lowering them if possible. Ah, yes, you're right. We had to increase... Don't turn away from me when I'm talking to you. Oh, it's because someone else came in. Ah, yes, you're right. We had to increase the taxes this past fiscal year in order to gather credits for starport repairs. I'm hopeful that once the repairs have been completed, we can lower the taxes. Sounds fair. Another citizen complained about the water pumps in the southern village at the southern village were broken, and they haven't been able to get any fresh water. Oh dear. I was not aware of this issue. I will make sure to stop by there and see what exactly the problem is. Thanks for letting me know. Oh, and a few other citizens had concerns about crime and something about farming issues. I appreciate that. I'll get my counsel on these issues. You know, I think you should keep on this path and learn more about being a politician. What do you think? I definitely want to learn more about this. My friend Mayor Durrell in Coronet can teach you a few things about city upkeep. Go, pay him a visit. I'll let him know you're coming. Thanks again. I'll go see him. Good luck. And if you ever want a job in town, stop by. I. And so once we complete that, we get 1,000 credits and we get this item placed in our inventory. This is the architect's uh, rendition of a house, which this is the generic... A large, generic, windowed, style 2 building, I believe. Uh, but you can see that this is part of a collection first delivery. If we, add it to the, if we add it to that collection, it will start a specific collection that was added during City Update 2.0. However, to complete the collection, I believe you need to do some of the other citizen, citizenry things that were added. Which, I, I haven't even finished any of those on any of my characters. They're a little bit of a time sink uh i started this on my other character i'm not gonna start on this one i don't know what the i think the reward is a bantha skin rug so if you remember watching the best one play through in uh, one of the apartments i was like wow but this is i haven't seen this bantha skin rug before i think that's the reward for this uh i have not seen it completed so yeah either way i want to keep it like this because it looks like a little cool decoration when you drop it in your house so i'm gonna leave it as is but let's go head over to coordinate and speak with major harper or Mayor Harper. All right, we're here at the Coronet City Hall. So we're going to go in. I'm going to head a left. We're going to go in where that player just came out to speak with the mayor. Who says, hello, Vum. Mayor Gorant mentioned you may come to visit soon. I hope your trip over was pleasant. Yes, I did. Thanks. Did he say anything else? He mentioned to me that you were leaving, uh, learning about being a politician and would want a lesson or two. You're right. Why can you teach me about being a mayor? Well, let's talk about maintenance and taxes. As a mayor, it is very important to keep an eye on your city's bank account. If you have no credits, you can't run the city and risk to lose it. Okay, well, what do I have to do then? It's simple. To raise funds, we have to collect taxes. For most, it will be an automatic and quick process when they pay their taxes. For others, they forget. Uh, you better not forget or we'll stab you. They forget or choose not to pay. You're going to pay them a visit and make sure to pay their taxes. No skimming off the top. 
I have a solid ledger showing me what they owe. Yeah, so we're just playing a tax collector. So you can see, though, if I open my profession wheel, that after completing our first mission with uh, the Moss Eisley Mayor, we unlocked Politician, which the first one lets us grant zoning rights, manage taxes, and place a city hall. So the barrier for entry for just placing a city hall is pretty low. Um, it's just that without going any further, you'd be limited. So, for example, you wouldn't be able to register a city on the map, which means, like, you see these player cities like Thunder Ridge, Stormrise, Hotherland. You wouldn't be able to do that once your city reached uh, level 3 or rank 3. Uh, you want to be able to place a bank structure. You want to be able to grant specific niche rights that they added with City Update 2.0, like grant harvest and rights, as that's higher level. You want to be able to manage your militia, so you can only be the mayor, etc. So that's rather you want to get Master Politician if you want to run a city as well. Again, you only need to do that first quest to place the city hall. You really can't do much with your city if you don't. Second of all, you'll probably notice that the first quest was themed around like what it means to be a mayor of a city, representing the citizens and whatnot. This one's a little bit more trying to introduce the mechanics. Obviously, you're not going to be going around to your players and trying to collect taxes off of them. That's an automatic process controlled by the city management terminal. But they're introducing that taxes is a system that is involved with player cities and that you can manage as the mayor. But here's our first indebted citizen who says, Did the mayor send you? And I say, Yes, it's time to pay your taxes. It's your lucky day. I still have some credits left. Great. Thank you kindly. Now leave me alone. Honestly, it's your lucky day. I have a big ass knife. Here's our next indebted citizen who says, let me guess, I have to pay my taxes. I like how they just see a strange person walk in, full set of armor, knife out, and it's like, ah, you're here for my taxes. What kind of tax collectors is this mayor sending normally? I have to wonder. Either way, I say, correct, you are past due date already. Well, I wanted to buy another drink, but I don't want to get in conflict with the mayor either. Good choice. Good, I hope the government will leave me alone now. Never. We'll be back later for more taxes. <laughs> Either way, uh, here's our next citizen. What do you want? Don't you see I'm busy here with my drink? You should pay so your city's taxes instead of lur <laughs> lurking around the cantina. <laughs> I am the uh, moral authority. Very lawful. Extremely lawful. Pay your taxes. Don't go out drinking. Ah, I see. It's the city's gone to new lows of sending unintimidating debt collectors here this should cover it i what would be more intimidating to you having my helmet off to see the dog bothan face whatever that was easy enough bartender another one wow all right let's talk to the tradition first who says Did i forget to pay my taxes again i'm afraid so has this happened to you before yes sadly i keep forgetting such things here i have the credits and tell them they are they need to get a better automated tax collection system great much appreciated see you this is even a science fantasy setting in the early 2000s when uh, like this was being established it's like they had the tax system implemented for player cities and then this quest gets written in 2024 or 2023 i don't know when this was first written i don't just know when it was implemented and um there's just the assumption that these futuristic cities don't have good automatic payment methods uh, I love it. Uh, you could say maybe it's just they don't need to invest in that if it's that kind of system, but seems like they do. Either way, this last citizen says, I saw you lurking around here in the cantina earlier. You the mayor's new nasty tax collector, eh? I don't know what you mean. I'm just doing my civic duty, helping the mayor. Wow, I'm such a brown noser. Wow, you're all the same. Here, take them. But I recommend you leave immediately. Okay, that's all I wanted. Then they grumble. All right, back to the mayor. I guess I needed to cleanse myself after talking to those citizens who were avoiding their taxes. Because I bat fingered that. Alright, let's go back. What's the best way to start a uh, day of galaxies playing? Collecting taxes, baby. That's my Star Wars fantasy. Either way, we're here with the <laughs> Mayor Harper Durrell. You have returned. Did you collect the taxes? Yeah, it was pretty easy, actually. Uh, great. I think you have learned your lesson about the city finances. Head over to Mayor Sa uh, Salome. Our court on Verney Island. He called me up and he says he wants to talk to you. Thank you. Goodbye. See you. And for this one, we get another thing, but this one doesn't isn't added to your collection. This is a piece of furniture for to get you the idea of how tall this is. I, I could almost walk through it on the shortest setting of Bothan. I think I clipped through it a little bit. So it's a pretty large replica. It's not like a uh, it's not a miniature model, like super tiny. It's quite sizable. 
But let's go have, over to Verney Island and speak with uh, the next guy. Oh, yeah, isn't there a POI badge here? Yep, there it is. Outdoor Theater, Verney Island. Journal Exploration Badges. Might as well grab it when I'm here. All right, so we are at the back of the Verney Island Cantina as the mayor, uh, I guess as a cost-saving measure, has his office set up in the back of the cantina. That or maybe he has a little bit of a drinking problem. Uh, either way, we are here. See, it's all nice decorated. Here he is. Um, I do have a question, though. He is pretty identical to that other mayor, the coronet mayor. You guys related? Or you just have the same, like, fashion consultant? Either way, speaking with him, he says, Greetings, Vaughn. Darrell mentioned he had a promising pupil. Are you prepared for your next step in mastering the art of politics? Yes, I am. What's the next step? This lesson focuses on city expertise and aesthetic enhancement. As you progress, you'll gain access to a range of expertise options for your city. Your choices are here are crucial for attracting and retaining citizens. Remember, enhancing your city's appearance is also key to its popularity. Understood. Do you have any tasks or challenges that I can assist you with? Ah, I'm glad you asked. There are some broken street lamps and withered flowers scattered around the city. I'd really appreciate it if you could repair the lamps and rejuvenate the flowers for me. Consider it done. Great. Please return to me when done. So he mentioned the Sitter Expertise system that was added with City Update 2.0, as well as City Decoration. Decorating cities has been a thing since cities were first introduced. City Expertise is obviously the Legends exclusive uh, mechanic that replaced the old City Specialization. I talked about it more in my City 2.0 guide, so feel free to check that out, as well as I did a ranking of those individual benefits in, as in another video. So this is kind of like getting you introduced to that idea of city management. And if we go back into the politician window again, we can see that we've advanced up to granting more types of zoning rights, placing banks, which makes sense because we just collected some taxes. Uh, but for this next boxes, we're going to get managing militia, placing cloning structures. It's going to do a cute couple boxes at a time. You'll notice it's not individual. So no, there's not one quest for each box. It kind of goes in chunks. But let's start to uh, rejuvenate Verney Island here with this first withered flower. And there's a flashpoint that's going to start in 10 minutes, luckily. Oh, you have to do the street lamps first. <laughs> okay, well, let's go get the street lamps. Now, luckily, we won't be here for 10 minutes, so we won't have to worry about the flashpoint uh, jumping in on us. But that is good to know. Battlefield marker. Oh, that's what that I did. I literally didn't know an object got dropped for that. Now I know. That for, for everyone's like, what was that battlefield marker thing you were looking at? That's the scent. That's the object that governs the barrier that pops around the city. That uh, red fence looking type thing down there. Because this entire area is going to be the next PvP flashpoint spot. But we don't have to worry about that. Which flashpoints is a Legends thing. They're just uh, other open areas to fight in. Instead of like fighting in Rustus. So they move. And Verney Island's one of the spots. Which by the way, after finishing the street lamp. The mayor said word around town is that. Those street lamps are working again. Great work. Please water the plants. By the way, while we're here on Verney Island, before I water the final plants, this structure over here has this individual standing in front of it. If you ever have um, tokens of gratification from Legends events, you can come here on Verney Island and redeem them from this individual. And there's a lot of cool stuff you can get. Namely, let's see, which one's a fun one that I like? Oh yeah, the glass display case, always something cool to have for decorations. Um, you can get some of those like cosmetic eye glowies for your appearance. Uh, oh, I have one of these in the city, the Mahjong terminal. Uh, yeah, you can get the VIP bunker, bed light bending bark speeder, pod racer. There's a lot of fun things to get here if you can stack up those combination, uh, stack up those tokens, and then during uh certain events, there will be 
items on the vendor that cycle in and out. So like during Empire Day and Remembered Day, there's usually a Tarkin painting that's on the vendor. So always look out for updates saying something new's on there. All right, we've watered all the flowers now. Let's speak with the mayor, then get off the island before a little conflict erupts. Ah, um, just the budding politician I was hoping to see. Have you fixed the street lamps and watered the flowers? Yes, I have. Excellent. It seems you've learned all that I can impart, Vum. Your next lesson awaits with Mayor Dicta and Derek Ontalis. It's time for you to head there now. Thank you. Goodbye. Farewell. And then we get another architect's model, which some of you may recognize. This is the Nibuian small house. I believe this is style two, or it's the round structure instead of the more uh, vertical structure. But let's go head over to Talus. So we're here on Talus now. And if you ever want to get to City Hall quickly, if you actually go to the Dierk shuttle port and not the starport, say if you're coming from somebody or somewhere else, uh, the City Hall is immediately behind it. I just want to say that is a killer commute for people using public transportation. Good on City Hall for that. Like if you work there or have to get there, that's nice. But we're going to head inside, head over to these left room again to speak with the mayor. Uh, get Place your bets now. Is he the same man? You're just everywhere, aren't you? Maybe they're just like identical, like triplets or something. Either way, let's speak with uh, Mayor Dick. Welcome to Dieric. I mean, that's kind of appropriate. Dieric, Dick, whatever. Uh, um, are you ready to embrace the complexities and challenges of the next phase in your political career? Which, before we advance, we'll see where we got on the boxes. So we were... We got the Manage Militia box from the last quest, place cloning, recruit city NPC, and place factional terminal. So the next one will be install mission terminals. And recruit NPC was a, a feature added with City Update 2.0, which involves placing chassis dealers and factional recruiters. So next one, we're going to get a couple other options here, but... Uh, we will respond to his question if we're ready to sing. Definitely, I'm excited to learn from the best. What will I be doing? This lesson is on martial policy. Managing a city is no small feat and can, in fact, be quite demanding. That's where the concept of the militia comes into play. By appointing dedicated and loyal citizens to your militia, you can significantly reduce the challenges and stresses of city governance. Good point. What do you need me to do? I'd appreciate it if you could speak with some of my militia members in Dierk to check if they have any reports or updates to share. All right, I'll be on my way then. Says great. Please return to me after you've spoken with them. So like we talked about earlier, managing militia is a feature that a mayor can do with the city. They can be very helpful. And with City Update 2.0 again, you can tweak their individual abilities. So if you want some to be able to like play city decorations and other others, you could do that. If you want some to have permanent zoning and others, you could do that. So you have different levels of militia powers. But here we are with the first Dierk City Militia who says, Greetings, Vom. Did the mayor send you? Send you? Did the mayor send to you? Whatever. That's correct. Can you give me a status report on the, the city district? Yes, everything runs smooth in this district. Nothing to report. Have a good day. Okay, that's great news. Bye. Bye. All right, let's go speak with the other militia members. Your right angle was you ended up as mayor on three different planets. Had to be the Disney change. EU would be juiced to that story for all it's worth. True. To be fair, uh, Verney Island and Cornet are both Corellia, so two of them are on the same planet. However, while Dierk is another planet, it's is, was it, is it a moon of Corellia? Or they just share the same system? Something like that? I forget the lore. So they are, you know, <laughs> still... Not very far off from being related. Here we are with the next uh, militia member says, Greetings, Vom. Did the mayor send you? That's correct. Can you give me a status report on the city district? Yes, everything runs smooth in this district. There's a new report. Have a good day. Okay, that's great news. Bye. Bye. Next one. Here we are in the bazaar area. Greetings, Vom. Did the mayor send you? That's correct. Can you give me the status report on the city district? Yes, everything runs smooth in this district. There's a report. Have a good day. Okay, that's great. Bye. Bye. This would be pretty accurate to a normal militia, by the way. If you actually had your militia members or giving you reports, it's going to be mostly nothing. Speaking with the last one on the side of the cantina here, it says, Greetings, Vum. Did the mayor send you? That's correct. Can you give me a status report on the city district? Yes, we have an abandoned house here in the district. 
I am not sure if the citizen will return or not. Tell the mayor to contact them, please. Besides that, everything's fine. Okay, we'll do. Bye. Bye. Uh, so looking out for abandoned structures in your city is kind of an automated process. If a player character hasn't logged in for, I think it's 60 consecutive days. Yeah, I think it's 60. Uh, their house will be marked for abandoned, and anybody, citizen, militia, mayor, non-citizen, can go up to that city's house if it says abandoned next to it, open up the radio menu with Tilda, and do uh, pack a building. They won't get tokens or anything for it, but they'll pack up that building. Similarly, if your player is going to be gone for a while and you won't be able to log in due to, you know, real-life circumstances or whatever have you, you can always contact your mayor and ask them, hey, I really like my spot in the city and I still want to continue to live here. However, real-life circumstances dictate that I won't be able to get on for a while. Can you mark my house as uh, safe? And what that does, in short, is that while that player character will no longer count towards the city citizen count to maintain a rank, their house won't be available for pack up. So no one can pick up their house, store it, and then say either the mayor or militia member Garrett's rights to somebody else and then drops a house there. They'll retain their spot. Either way, though, we're back with the mayor and he says, welcome back, Vum. Um, eager to hear your report on the current state of my city. No significant issues to report. A few militia members mentioned some abandoned houses, but it's possible that the residents are just on holiday. Ah, I see. It's essential you remain aware of your city status. I'll contact the owner of the abandoned house to inquire about the potential report turn. Thank you for your assistance. Your next step is to meet Mayor Vindy and Thede for your final lesson. Safe travels. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. And so this one, we get another replica, which is the Triumphal Arch from the city of Nubu, which you can see also in front of the palace, kind of at the end of that large uh, square. <laughs> I was like, not quarter. Square. <laughs> Either way, let's go to Thede. Let's speak with Thede's mayor. All right, so we're here at the Thede Palace. We're going to head on inside. And if you missed it last time here during the 190 series, you haven't visited the Thede Palace in a long, long time, which, you know, can't blame me if you haven't. Uh, they did redo some of the interior decorating. It's much prettier now. And to draw you into this room to check out the cool painting and all the other interior decorating that was done in here is the mayor who again i guess it was a uh, uh what what is it it's not quintuplets right that's five quadruplets there we go it took me a second uh it's the quadruplet mayor uh roe vindi speak with him welcome to the Vum, the heart of naboo's political landscape are you prepared to delve deeper into the art of politics your next lesson here will not only refine your skills, but also immerse you in the unique challenges of running a city. Absolutely, I'm looking forward to it. Today's lesson is on civil policy. As a mayor, your main objective is to keep your citizens content, which is vital for your city's standing in the galaxy. Additionally, it's important to provide essential terminals for daily activities, catering to the everyday needs of your residents. I see, is there anything I can do to help around the city? Absolutely. We've had some trouble with gang members damaging numerous bank terminals around the city. It would be immensely helpful if you can take care of repairing them. Sure, I can do that. Great. Please return when you're done. So after we finished that last mission, by the way, we unlocked placing missing terminals, placing city garages, more zoning rights, placing plants. Uh, and now once we complete this one, we should get everything else, which is placing statues, street lamps, fountains, gardens uh filler building which is like buildings that can't be occupied by players uh roads both of these out of a city update 2.0 and then our final one is play shuttleport which is an appropriate end cap as that's what is a very attractive for many players looking for a city and wanting to run a city themselves so this uh we'll just have us going around interacting with these terminals so we'll go ahead and start repairing the first one all from the i <laughs> Once has never seen this go wrong. Yep, nope. I'm sure that guy is completely upstanding member of society, especially as the mayor of Thede. Surely he's not doing anything nefarious. <laughs> Maybe he's the evil quadruplet. Quadruplet. He's the he's the evil sibling. That's why he's the mayor of Thede. 
He's like, we is like we need someone to mayor uh uh Papa Palpatine's like main main steezy, you know what I'm saying? And they're like this guy's like, yes, I'll do it. And the other three were like, uh, just stick us on other planets, please. Thank you. All right, we got two more terminals left. One's over here by the bank or by the starport. I gotta ask everybody, it flip-flops, do you all say spaceport or starport? I prefer starport because it's a literally... It, it And the number of characters are fewer in the word. It's the same number... I'm gonna... F you son of a bitch. Like, it's, no, it's not extra syllables. Is it star is easier for me to say than space? You know what I mean? Uh, maybe not. Either way, here's the last terminal after I killed that cop. Where are the war memorials? Bunkers? He was legit by 30 years ago by some B1s and there's no evidence of it. Yeah, well, you know, um... They had a budget. I don't know, this is also like the future, man. They could have uprooted all the bunkers that were in the city. I mean, the city's surrounded by bunkers. It's just they were abandoned and left for a bunch of gangs to live in. You did the Naboo legacy. I know you did because you're at least gotten a Cor Corellia legacy. So uh, there are bunkers. They're just all left to rot with gangs and private corporations. <laughs> They're all similarly laid out. Weird. I feel like having a copy-paste bunker format for your military would be a security risk. Because then if they figure out the layout of one, then they know the layout of all of them. Either way, we're thinking about too much. Eh, too much. Welcome back, Bum. How did your investigation and repair work on the bank terminals go? I found several terminals extensively damaged, but I managed to get them all back up and running. Fantastic work. It's essential for a city to maintain functioning terminals. You've now mastered all the necessary skills to be a politician. Congratulations. One congratulation, not pull up. Not congratulations, congratulation. Don't get greedy. Your next step is to visit the governor of Thede here in the palace to obtain your pol politician's license. Oh, that's wonderful news. Thank you so much for the guidance and support. Thank you, and best of luck on your journey ahead. And we get an architect's rendition of Jabba's palace. Look at that little key thing. All right, so we are further in the palace now as the governor is all the way back up here. I want to speak with her. Governor Femus Barkin. Welcome, Vum. I have learned lots of exciting news about your career in politics, <laughs> and we have been watching you your career with great interest. I think that's another film reference, guys. Also, I just want to say that everything I learned about being a politician is just being a good handy person. You know what I mean? Uh, terminals, I got you. Running deliveries, I got you. Get tax, collecting taxes, I got you. <laughs> Thanks, it's been uh, challenging, but rewarding. I was told to meet with you regarding my politician license. Indeed, keep all your lessons in mind and you'll thrive in any political endeavor the galaxy presents. I now officially grant you the title of Master Politician. Ooh, meta. Thank you. I look forward to seeing my constituents with uh, serving my constituents with pride and dedication. I should be proud of your accomplishments, Vun. Until next time, and we get a architect's rendition of a uh, Nabooian City Hall. Wow! I'm hoping that they add uh, architect's rendition items like this, little mini models of other structures, as they introduce other content in the game. They there's also uh, mini models of the ranches and farms that were added. I don't know if there's models of, of all of the structures yet. I, I know I think there's a Tatooine house model somewhere, but that is the politician uh, quest line that was added. And if we open my profession window now, you'll see that we're all filled up. Vum is ready to be a mayor and or serve her community as a member of the militia should uh, she need to raise to the call, rise to the call, whatever. 
Uh, either way, we're going to get buffed. We're going to go do another piece of uh, Legends content, which is an update version of the Valerian theme park. So let me go get buffed. All right, so we're here at the Lucky Despot and back in Moss Eisley. So we're going to be doing the Valerian theme park or Legends rendition of it. It's been updated to be level 90 content. I would highly, highly recommend that if you're going to do this by yourself, you're fully buffed and you got your gear, there is a few tough encounters, especially for some professions or individuals who might not be as geared. Uh, when I did this alone on my smuggler, there was a there was a spicy fight or two, but I was able to sell it. Commando was really easy, medic was really easy, and I don't foresee myself having too much difficulty with spy. But you can get a hint on how to start by talking to Babu here, who is uh, the security guard. You say, what's the story of the Lucky Despot? And then it'll say, Lucky Despot is run by Lady Pavilion, a kind and generous patron who has many diverse business interests, some more legitimate than others. I like how he's open about it. Also, I like how they try to give him a little bit of narrative there with the cybernetic forearm on his right side. Build him up a little special to stand out a little bit more from the other security guards at the Despot. If I was looking for work or something exciting to do, who would I talk to? Well, then I can expect you can find all of those here. You should talk to either Kavas or End here. They work for Lady Ferrari, and I'm like, sounds good. Be careful of those two, though. You can get more than you bargained for. There is a lot of bad blood between them. Thanks. No problem. So he doesn't give us a quest, but he gives you a hint on how to start navigating the Valenian theme park. You are going to need to, uh, to do quests for both of these individuals. So it doesn't really matter which one you start with. Well, let's just start with Kavas, because she's right here. It's this female chist standing near the stage. She says, what can I do for you? Well, actually, the question is whether I can do something for you. Well, there is a proposition, if I have ever heard one. You afraid of getting your hands dirty, my dear? Not one bit. What do you need done? I literally just got done war crime on Bestman, lady. I'm ready to get dirty again. I need to expose a colleague for the traitor that I know he is. Sounds like something I can help with. I am literally a spy. Sabotage getting dirt on people is my thing here at the moment. The plan is to prove that Lady Valerian, to Lady Valerian, that End is stealing her gambling profits. I don't have any evidence that he is doing this, so I say we plant some on him. If he is cooked, if he is co uh, crooked, then the manufacturing a case against him isn't wrong, is it? Or we're going to manufacture his evidence? Forget it. I'm out of here. Uh, first one. No, it isn't wrong. Just expedient. First, if you have to break into his room and steal his big access codes. It is a very secret, secretive triclops, but I have the tail. I have a tail on him for the last two days. He will contact you and show you where India lives. I'm already contacted. Us. I don't trust cops or something like this. Too many people listening in with too many frequencies. Meet me at these coordinates. But I say, Kavas, after t holding this for a call, how can he talk to me calmly? Like he'll tell you where to meet him. Good luck. Well, he already told me. So let's go meet In's tail. Atba? Atba. Here's Atba. Let's do this fast. I don't want to know you, and you definitely don't want to know me. Okay, dude, calm down. Hold on. They put gloves on him, but because of the hands, it doesn't work with this model. See, like, the Aquilish hands are clipping through. I didn't notice that before. Either way, I said, show me where in place is. Let's get one thing straight. I am not going to show you anything. You are going to go to these coordinates that I am uploading to your data pad. Get it? Got, get on with it. Transferring now. This guy is, uh, he's trying to keep his nose clean, I guess. Oh no, we are uh, attacked. You know, I wonder what happens if I was a cloak. Should I? Sorry, I'm brain farting right now. I was like, wait, should I clock now? Let's just fight him. Show you how difficult this may or may not be. All right, we got him. Not the most dangerous fight. Honestly, forgot those guys are going to show up. So we're coming in here. Got some cool decoration going on. Spent some time interior design on my guy. Got all these bolo fish. Damn, this guy's a big fan of Nim. Well, that should be enough to piss off Valerian. Jeez. Sorry, I'm just admiring the decor. Hold on, let me go look downstairs. Oh, never mind. I guess they didn't decorate downstairs. If they did, I don't... Like, they wouldn't put this wall here. Oh, wow, it even pushes you back. 
Wow. All right. Well, either way, uh, we see that the data pad is right here on the ledge. So let's grab that. Wow. 30 seconds. All right. Let's have a let's just vibe for a minute. Stare at C3PO and R2 in this uh, picture. Which, by the way, can't tell from this angle. Those are just the mini miniature figures that someone would just put in front of it. Not like as a perspective trick. All right, we've downloaded the bank account information, so let's return to Kavas. Back in the lucky despot with Kavas, she says, Hope things went smoothly. I'm not a problem. What is next? Next is something easy. A courier will be taking cash from the gambling halls here to the bank to deposit. Ambush him and take the cash. Got it. Where do I go? Next best, The best place to ambush him is near the bank. I have loaded the coordinates up to your data pad. A, be careful and use a professional for these runs. They will go after you if they spot you first. I will be careful. Good. Well, I can literally cloak. So if they spot me first, they either got sharp eyes or uh, just a skill issue on my part. All right. So we're near the ambush point. So let's hop down and go invisible because why not? There, there they are. They would have spotted me, but, uh, you know. I was invisible, so like, wait, where did they go? Uh, right, right here. Got him. All right, back to Kavas with the cash. All right, we got the money, and we got with Kavas again. She says, good for you. I was worried. I heard that in warned the courier to be on the lookout for trouble. Nothing I couldn't handle. Here's the cash. What's next? Always straight to the heart of the matter. I like someone who sees what they want and goes straight for it. Well, right. Now, there's a small problem. What's the problem? Blina, my slicer, <laughs> I love that name, was going to place an equivalent amount of credits equal to the street value of this cash into N's account, but now he can't. Why not? Blina has had his slicer tools stolen. Looks like they got vents to some Jawas. I need you to go out to the Jawa camp and get Blina's tool back. It's good as done. Great, Blina has a tracker set up. So he knows exactly where the Jawas are. Clever thing, isn't he? Now off you go. Alright, so the Jawa fences are right outside Moss Isley, so let's hop out and uh, head over there. Here we are with the Jawa fences. And I think I have to do some murdering, which they are level 16. Poor guys. Nothing found. Got it. All right, now that we got these slicer tools, let's return them. You think I'd be able to ask for them back or barter or pay, but nah. Good old galaxies get straight to the harder matter and kill those fools. Here we're back with Kavas, speak with her, says, Well, you have really done well for me. Blina was able to get into that uh, into Inn's account, and then we will have the evidence I need. Glad to hear it. So what do I get? You were doing this for the money ra rather than your uncontrolled desire to help me in my time of need? I am hurt. But fine, here's your payment. What do I do now? Go see what Inn is up to. Maybe you can get more information out of him and we can really get him kicked out. All right, let's go speak with Inn, who's back here in front of this terminal. What And what do you want? Maybe a job, maybe a free ticket to the local Nuna petting zoo. What do you have to offer? Great, a comedian. Okay, smart guy. I have enough problems in my life with what Kavas is trying to backstab me. Backstab? What do you mean? Kavas is trying to get me in bad with Lady Valerian, claiming that I am stealing gambling profits. Well, I know for a fact she is setting up the smuggling operation and getting a kickback from it. So what do you plan to do? Beat her to the punch, of course. But I need someone who isn't well known in these parts. Are you interested? Considering I just got done helping the mayor by walking around talking to people, I did the legacy quests, which effectively had me destroy the White Thranta operation. Yeah, I'm pretty a no, pretty much a no name around here, so yeah, I'll help you. The job is simple. I am positive that Kavas is using a gang of hut wannabes to rip off Lady Valerian's smuggling operations. I want you to infiltrate the gang and find evidence that proves Kavas is orchestrating their efforts. Sounds like something I can do. Where do I go? I have added the names of two of the gang members to your data pad. Talk with them, get them into their confidence, and get the information to Kavas. Okay, on my way. Come back quickly. Let's go make friends with some gang members. I like that this quest name, by the way, is called Perry. It's like every Jedi watching this right now is just reflexively being like a saber block. <laughs> Let's speak with Moa, who says, and what do you want? I need some work. 
Low risk, high reward would be nice. Well, you certainly have an attitude I like. I could use someone to get me a few weapons. Interested? Just dump what you need in my data pad and it's yours. And so we need to pick up from weapons for them. And then for Larry, who says, and you would be looking for what? Something fast with a high payoff. Okay, well, I can't pay you anything, but me and the fellows are looking to score something soon and we could use some nondescript, something nondescript for us to wear to avoid getting ourselves fingered. You think you can do that? What do you need? I need some outfits for my guys. Nothing fancy or recognizable. Go steal some. I'm sure some fancy craftsman has an extra box lying around one of their crafting stations. That doesn't seem so bad. I'll be back. Okay, so we gotta go pick up a bunch of uh, uh, boxes sitting around Moss Isley, which they don't give you waypoints for. There is a list, I believe, on the wiki that works as a walkthrough. I am going to try to find these myself. Uh, I'm going to preface this with the fact, though, that basically every time I do this, I just just don't find all of them. And I usually end up having to look up waypoints. But let's give it our best effort. Like here, next to the armor crafting station, there's a wearables factory crate that we can click on. Probably be some shirts. Who leaves shirts wearing or laying around like this? Especially with all this sand that can get in them. Next is weapon crafting station. We got another wearable factory crate. Here's a weapons crafting station again with another crate. And over next to these structures and another wearables. I believe there's a crate on the other side of that one. Somewhere? No? Oh, wait, yeah, it is. Oh, this is behind this NPC. Okay, so we got all of the shirts. Now we need to find the weapons. Now I'm trying to remember where those are. Trying to remember... I feel like they're probably in a section of the city that I'm not looking in right now, huh? Because I don't think they're inside anywhere. We will eventually need to go inside. Hold on, I'll, look, I'll peek in here. This might be spoilers, though. If I were a box of guns, where would I be? Besides in the United States. Or would I be in Star Wars? I feel like once I find one, the rest will just kind of appear, you know what I'm saying? Like, I found all those shirts easily once I started... Once I found one, I was like, oh, they're all next to the crafting stations. Am I gonna have to look this up? I've done this, like, two or three times. you think I'd remember at least where the weapon crates are. Or, like, at least, like, where one is. My goodness, I'm blind. I bet, like, as soon as I look this up, I'm gonna be like, of course it was here. Oh, I think I know where this is. I know there's a waypoint, but I think I know... I think I know where that wants me to go. I think they're in here. Yep, got anyone to be buffed for this. So this is Jabba's compound in Moss Eisley, by the way, next to the cloning facility. So and he's got some tough Gamorrean guards in here. This is what I mean by, if you're a little unprepared for this, this could be a rude wake up, but uh, we've, we've, de we've dealt with worse. Wow, nice officer move, dude. Yeah, now he's gonna have to wait for the root to wear off. Their respawn is also pretty short. Oh, there's a fourth one in here too that this I coincidentally didn't pull. Oh. Wait, there's six in here? And there's a there's a stealth scanner that I didn't even notice. Uh-oh. Well, that's not that's not a great start, but. Damn, Jabba, you got tighter security than some Imperial bases I've been in with that stealth scanner. So I'm going to attack this one now, because you don't want to wait too long. Or else they just start spawning again. Alright, we got them. Let's uh, take out these weapon containers before they start respawning. I saw this sitting here, and I just totally didn't register what it was until I decloaked. And I was like, oh, right, this thing. 
All right, we have all the weapons though, so let's uh, head on back. All right, let's talk to him in reverse order for fun. Here's a little writ. Give him the weapons. He says, "Great, I'll let C C Kurt know how much you've helped us here. We'll give him the shirts and give this guy his weapons." He says, "Good. There will be a good for our next job. I'll let the boss know about what you did for us." And then we are kind of says, "Well, the boys speak highly of you. Come on over, and we'll see truly if you can measure up." So let's go meet with their boss, who is literally right around the corner from them. Maybe this building's their base of operations. There's Kerr. The boys say you did some good work for them. You interested in helping out? Sure, I'll kind of help. Good to see you're willing, but stealing a few pistols and jackets for us isn't enough. You need to prove that you aren't undercover. You game? Uh, sure I am. I figure if you are undercover for Corsac or the Imps, you wouldn't want to mess with the Empire. I am Imperial Flacked, so let's see what you have me do. Now, I don't want you to take a Stormy's helmet or anything that crazy, but there is a corral of dewbacks near an outpost of newly arrived imps. They are using them as mounts until their speeders arrive. What do you want me to do? You're going to turn those dewbacks against their Imperial riders. There should be a med bay in the Imperial outpost. If you can get inside there, you can mix a bunch of chemicals into the medicine containers. Here is the injector. Mix all of those chemicals into a big, crazy medical medicinal cocktail, or medical cocktail, whatever, both have been fine, and inject it into all of the dewbacks you can find. They'll go ballistic. The imps will have no choice but to abandon their entire herd. I can do that. Good, good going. I don't like doing this. I'm hurting animals, but got it for the plot. All right, here we are at the uh, storm outpost. So we got to go mix the medis a medical cocktail first. Hilariously, if you look at these dewbacks, um, they are champion level 49s, and these are the Imperials that we're going to mess with with these uh, 50, level 50 dudes are normal, which, by the way, I don't... I guess I'm just making them aggressive, because they don't really need my help kicking their butt. Shouts to these gorgs, by the way. So here are the medical supplies in this little uh, facility. Let's uh, mix them on up here. Alright, here's the last medical supply. Alright, so now we have to go inject the uh, medical cocktail, really like this term, into the dewbacks. I'm sorry, Deweys, but I got a Dewey to you. Which, if we just click on them, bring up the radio menu, I think, or is this, yeah. Endorphin Injection Enhancer. Which, you notice they get real big all of a sudden. They go from level 49 to level 100 with... Two and a half million health? Yeah, I wouldn't want to, uh... Tell some of that. We gotta do two more. Which is hilarious, because check this out. So they get pissed, run out. And they go... Um... Into the base to attack some of these stormtroopers. And then they just explode? So, my, my my imagination is that that is the Imperials retaliating, like they're culling the herd or whatever. I think that's what that's supposed to be. But it honestly just looks like we amp up the dewbacks and they run in and explode on the Imperials. Uh, that And that's going to be my headcan from now on. Also, that's bright as shit. Maybe I should have put a flashing light warning up before this happened. Maybe I'll do that on the VOD. Either way, there we go. Uh, we gotta go back after completing our initiation. Here we are at a Kukur who says, Alright, you did well. Ready for some real action and a real payoff? Sure, what's the job? We have a tip from a highly placed source on Lady Valeria's organization that a smuggler is coming into town. He is loaded, loaded with raw Kessel stones straight from Kessel. Is that what that's called? We are going to take him out. You interested? Of course I am. What's the plan? The job is going down at these coordinates. Meet us there. All right, let's go to the, uh, go intercept these, uh, smuggler stuff going on. All right, I want to try something since I'm a spy. Because I already know what's kind of going to happen here. So I'm going to go into stealth. I want to speak to Wamoro. Yeah, see, these, all these NPCs are supposed to jump you and attack you, which they're, like, all level 10s. So this is kind of like a jump scare, but obviously if you're cloaked, they don't. 
I have to defeat them anyways, though, so. See, they're not that scary. I'm not even doing much. This is my fart cloud. It's just kind of like a jump scare. I'm gonna get you. Alright, now I get to talk to Wilmoro Cerdo, a delivery agent, who says, Thanks for saving my skin. Valerian promised I wasn't going to be noticed. I'm going to get out of here and give her a piece of my mind. No problem. Get out of here. See you around. They get calls up. What are you doing? Kavas set this operation up so that we would get the goods. I knew you were fake for your for your sake. I suggest you stay far away from us. I have to go back and, quote, finish it? Which means... Return to end with your copy of the incriminated communication from her about Kavas setting up the hit on the smuggler. Here we are back with End. You got the evidence? Thanks so much. Here is something for you. 10,000 credits. What should I do now? You want to be with Lady Valerian? She won't believe this evidence if it comes directly from me, but if it comes from you, an apparent outsider, she may believe you. Yeah, she may believe a total stranger, which I did come in and threaten her life before, so... Oh, either way, here's Lady Valerian, and he says... Welcome to the Lucky Despot. Whatever your tastes were, uh, whatever your advice, I'm sure we can fulfill your every need. He's such a gracious host, Lady Valerian. I have some information about your man in that, that could interest you. And what would that be? In masterminded the hit on your cash career. He disposes of the cash and see your account. Here's the proof. Yes, I know about how In and Kavas are trying to uh, get me to eliminate their counterpart. I also know of each of these others' current schemes. You know about this. We get 10,000 credits, we get a vehicle deed for the Rick 920 rickshaw, and Lady Valerian says, Little one, I know everything that happens in the Lucky Despot. Nothing happens without my gainsay. But I will need to discuss, need need, need to discipline in and Kavas for allowing the squall to get out of hand. I thank you for coming to me. Here's a duck in my appreciation. If you wish for more work, speak with me again. Let's speak with her again. In a cruel twist of irony, I have discovered the presence of a real traitor in my happy little family here. Are you willing to help me? Just give me the details. One of my subordinates, Una, has been selling information about my operation at Jabba the Hutt, and the worm is using that information against me. So find out what Una has told Jabba, and then kill Una. Tell me, uh, tell me where you think this character is. Here's Una's last known location. Bring me his head. Okie dokie, that's something that Vum can really do i'm good at that if my track record has anything to show for it so far in this journey ah uh, i'm sorry it looks like you have a small cave layer spawned in the middle of your operation here oh, hi una after defeating una it says looks like you killed una before you could ask any questions see if there's anyone around who might be able to answer your questions Let's talk to the one person we talked to, Keela. Thanks, Una has been terrorizing me, so how can I help you? How is Una tied to Jabba? Una has been selling Jabba info on all of Valerian's off-world smuggling operations. Jabba's goons have taken out dozens of Valerian's people. The last one assassinated was one of Valerian's pilots. Jabba had him taken out so that the Alliance would hire one of uh, one of his ships to run some medical supplies for to their new base. Thanks. No, thank you for saving me. Back to Lady Valerian. Back with Lady Valerian, though. She says, well done. Keela's information is illuminating. Java has overstepped Java has overstepped his bounds and must be punished. Are you ready for another assignment? Always just download the details into my datapad. This one is dangerous, but I am greatly angered by Una's treachery. Java's insolence cannot go unpunished. I am on my way. Good luck. Psycho killer. Kiss Kase. <laughs> that's the best friend you're gonna get out of me which is not very good all right here we are and we got jumped by eska k java's assassin wow real talk don't even remember fighting this guy anyway i'm gonna open up on him he asked for a medic well now he's dead i don't know why i cloaked gotta go back to lady valerian can I just ITV here? Yeah, I sure can. Take me to the shuttle port. All right, we're back with Lady Valerian, who says, So Keska K is dead. I thank you for that. I am still not finished with that hot worm, though. 
Speak with me again, should you wish to know how you could further serve me. I look forward to that. And we get 20,000 grass in the oil bath, which is a piece of furniture. Some of you may recognize it. It's the oil bath that the C-3PO got dunked in, right? Or if you play Lego Star Wars, pretty sure there's an oil bath sequence. Seems familiar in my brain. Either way, speak with Lady Valerian again. He says, Jabba still is not fully paid off for his effrontery. Are you ready to serve me again? What am I to do now? I advise an appropriate punishment for Jabba. One of my informants inside Jabba's organization has informed me. Your informant informed you, Lady Valerian? You don't say. That Jabba is shipping spice out of the Rebel Alliance. I want the ship carrying the spice to be destroyed. Why is Jabba shipping spice? Uh, their good is destroyed. I mean, I'm not confused why he's shipping spice. I'm more confused why the Alliance wants it. Is this like a callback to the Secrets of the Siren theme part? I mean, that was a vet, though, that got shot down. And that was near Rory. We're in the tattoo system. So this is separate. Either way, we gotta go into space. Let's go. I'd destroy it, right? I don't remember. Do I destroy it? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of you might be like, Burrito, are you flying drunk? Uh, I'm uh, trying to get better at mouse aiming and flying, so. There we go. So, I'm trying to fly a little bit out of my comfort zone. All these ships are tier 5, by the way, so make sure that you uh, don't necessarily need to be ace, but you can be pretty close. <laughs> this is awkward. I was flying a, a heavy sick last night with an engine 10 in it. So now I went from like, wow, I just can't not overturn on things to, all right, I'm now back in like a giant bucket. Oh, right, I didn't set up weapon groups on this. Ugh. Keep hitting sh chip, dude. I gotta get used to all these key binding. I redid all my key bindings too, to make this work. <laughs> also, the like I mentioned this to my friend who was a, uh, who's been coaching me through this transition process to mouse play, where because the virtual joystick has the little um, reticle to show you the angle it's going. I keep thinking that's what I need to aim with instead of the green crosshairs, because like at extremes, right? Especially when I'm going fast, it trails out pretty far ahead of that uh, crosshair. But that's not where you're shooting with. You're not shooting with this little blue thing. You're shooting with the green, but the blue thing's showing the trajectory, right? That's actually following the mouse, so it feels counterintuitive for aiming. Well, anyways, I destroyed all the ships. Uh, let's go land. We're right back with Lady, Ver Lady Verarian, who says, Well done, but I seem to have angered the minuscule worm known as Jabba. Are you ready for the final task? What must I do? Jabba is sending an assassination squad after me. So I, my sources indicate they'll be arriving shortly. You will ambush the squad in public before they can get inside the lucky dustbin. Kavas and my bodyguards will assist you. I'm on my way. This job must be done in public. Finish this now. All right. She wants to make a spectacle out of it. She really wants to flex her superior gang leader muscles so let's uh let's come down here we're gonna speak with babu who says did lady really relay the news relay the news yes are you ready for the ambush just about my men are going to barricade the entrance to the lucky despot and help defend it stand by they'll be here soon and here they are they barricaded it which by the way they're all like level 91s with 86,000 health and <laughs> preparing for ambush. They're the assassins. Watch I have 85s. I just like that like somebody could be doing like legacy quest stuff or piloting stuff and then this just happens in front of them. That was it. Did Babu die? <laughs> Where'd he go? Yep, this is go back to Lady Valerian. All right. Uh, <laughs> very abrupt ending. They clean up that barricade pretty fast. 
I didn't see Kavasan in, by the way. Either way, we're back with Lady Valerian. Who says? You have served me well. I suspect Jabba will make it his, make it his next move against me for a while. Here's a token of my appreciation. So we get 10,000 credits. This player is doing free quest. Do you need some help? <laughs> Got him for you. Um, so you get the ba uh, Valerian's Badge of Integrity. Oh, there it is. It's under the theme park, which makes sense. Valerian's Badge of Integrity. Wow. And as you all saw, we got one final reward from this, which is the schematic for the large Tatooine house style three. This legend structure makes it look kind of like Lara's homestead. So you have that kind of a small entry point that goes down and there's a big circular pit with like the moisture vap uh, vaporator in it. You can decorate it. It has a bunch of side rooms. I believe this is a large structure. Yeah, I mean, large is in the name, but like I think it's five lots. It's a cool house. You can place it on Tatooine and lock only. Blends in pretty well on Tatooine, especially if you build an area with a lot of sand, as the structure has sand around it. Unlock looks okay, maybe a little bit different colored. You could also put it on Dantooine, which um, makes sense, because Tatooine instructions could usually go on Dantooine also, like Naboo instructions, but uh, it, does, it doesn't have as much sand on that planet, so it looks a little off in some spots, but whatever. Uh, that is it for the imp uh, the Legends take of Valerian's theme park. I am going to go get rid of these ship parts. Let me clean my inventory a little bit. And then we're going to go get uh, into something else. All right, so I am now on Yavin 4. I am on the west side of Yavin 4, out of what is the known as the Light Side Temple. This is a... We're going to start a prerequisite quest series for some of the other Legends heroics. We did the Avatar platform earlier in the series, so we can go into a hard mode Avatar platform. This is for what's known as the Jedi theme park. The Jedi theme park will be a couple of quests leading up to a boss. Uh, I won't be doing that boss today as it requires a pretty uh, knowledgeable group to execute on. And then in order to get the second boss, there's another quest in between that. We're just going to be focusing on doing the quest leading up to that right now. I highly, highly recommend doing this in a group of at least like two or two to two people, M more preferably four. I would say at least four players is pretty cozy, um, especially if one of those is a medic. Even better if you have an officer in there too for that action. Not super necessary, but it will make things go a little faster. However, I am going to demonstrate that this can be done solo specifically by professions with cloaking abilities like spy and jedi but let's head into the light side temple here while i talk about that the reason i recommend doing this in the group is we're going to be going to a uh we're going to be doing a few quests that have some very difficult enemies similarly we're going to be going to a quest area that even for professions that can cloak it is quite difficult to get through alive and so i'm going to be playing in a certain way to try and avoid dying Similarly, we are going to be focused on executing well in combat. I think we're going to be okay, but I got some backup plans. So if we come back here, we'll see some cool decor going on in here. There are two NPCs. There's Kama Vol and there's Master Koa. If you are a Jedi, you will need to speak with Master Koa. If I try to speak with him, he just says, Hello, friend. I suggest speak with Kama Vol. He will guide you. So for non-Force sensitives, you have to go to Kama Vol. Who says, excuse me, I was wondering if you could help me. Of course, what do you need? A short while ago, we detected a series of unusual ground quakes happening nearby. Our sensor equipment couldn't determine what was causing them, so we sent a team of scientists to investigate. Shortly after setting up camp, they transmitted a distress call that was cut off. We haven't heard from them since, and we fear the worst. Could you go find them and bring them back to the temple? Sure, if you upload the location of their camp to my datapad, I'll go and investigate. Thank you, my friend. I just hope you reach them in time. Here is the location of their camp. Come back once you've found our people. So we're going to accept this. Investing in the service, part one. So if we open our map, we can see we got to go way to the other side of the planet. So I'm going to use some travel houses to get there quickly instead of driving all the way there. Because 10,000 meters is far, dude. Uh, I think even if you go to the Imperial Fortress, it's still at least like 4,000 out or something. So... We're going to be using some strats to get around, know what I mean? Okay, we're at the waypoint. 
which we get an update that says, As you approach the side of the disturbance, it becomes apparent that something's indeed very wrong. The ground travels constantly beneath your feet. I'm on my jetpack, but I got you. Several nearby trees burn seemingly... Uh, burn, seemingly having been struck by blaster fire. Smoke wafts through the air. A makeshift camp has been set up nearby. You should start your investigation there. All right, let's travel a little bit over to this camp. So before progressing further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my gear off of my camouflage set as camouflage is not going to be too terribly helpful. So I'd rather have the survivability of agility rather than a uh, camouflage. So I'm going to do that. And also I'm going to make sure all my buffs are running. So we have to investigate the area. There are five things to click around here, like this data pad. Now, if you're doing this in a group, I highly, highly recommend that you have when you're on four or five, only have one person click at a time. There was a unfortunate side effect when this quest was first implemented and everyone was trying to do it at the same time. Because once you get to the fifth click, it spawns an NPC. I think it only spawns one, but it's a pretty tough NPC. And the problem people were having was that since everyone was trying to do this at the same time, people were spawning NPCs and not everyone was killing their NPCs, either because they underestimated how difficult it was because they didn't know how difficult it would be. Or maybe they were intentionally doing that, or maybe they just lost the fights and the NPC was still sitting there. And I specifically remember coming over here like day, day after, either day of or day after release, and there was like 12 level 91 or 92 very tough NPCs just hanging around, and they were just deleting everybody who was trying to do it. So the only way to fix it was for people to group up together in the defeat. And what you could say, oh, well, that's part of the thing. But I'm just saying, like, if you're doing this in a group and you're not ready for it, it might take you by surprise. There's always, like, the fifth one that I can never find. Oh, I think it's a scanner. I always, like, look over the scanners because it's, like, slightly away from the camp. Not far. Just far enough to where my tunnel vision misses it. And we're in combat with two cultists. Wow. So, oh, so it spawns two level 92s each. Which, if I check their health here... 205k each. Wow, yeah. <laughs> that's no, uh... That's nothing to s snub your nose at. Especially if you come here unprepared. So, yeah, you can see how a lot of these NPCs can stack up quickly and then uh, cause chaos if people aren't finishing their meals, so to speak. Being a wish, I'm fin finishing the meal. That is my action pool. Come on, man. I'm gonna spawn decoy by me sometime. Oh, I should use cloak recovery when I decoyed. Damn, guys. I'm still not good at playing Spy, and it's been a couple of weeks now. Granted, I have not been playing Spy outside the stream, so... Luckily, I think we have the survivability to tank this when there's only one of them. Two of them... Obviously, a little spicy, but I think, I think we can handle one. I think, I think one of the fights is gonna spawn three of these dudes. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna deal with that, man. Unless like I can cloak and like wait it out a little bit. We'll see. Granted, I did not play this one uh, amazingly, and the other ones I believe I can have a little bit more control. This one. You can't interact with objects while cloaked. So I had to be out of cloak for this one. The other ones, I'm going to be walking into them, the ambushes, basically. So I think I can at least start it cloaked. Could these cis shadows be causing the ground quakes? After all, through the force, anything is possible. Yeah, I guess so. Perhaps looking around the area surrounding the camp will reveal exactly where those Sith came from and what their motivations are for attacking the camp. Okay. So let's go investigate the outlying areas around the camp now. All right, so we're coming up on the neck first area to investigate. So I'm going to just whoop. Another ambush, defend yourself. Yeah, see, you can have a little bit more control when it's like this. Wow, I can't the other one doesn't even get mad. He's just vibing. 
I wonder if I'll break it. Like, I wonder if he'll despawn or something. Nah, he gets mad. Okay. All right. Obviously, this went a little bit better since I was able to control the start of this fight. So we're, we're just down this guy now, which I'm out of action, unfortunately. This would definitely be going better again if I upgraded my spy setup, but... Meh. We'll just get through this with a heroism five-piece spy. It's fine. <laughs> no, spice fake missed. R.I.P. the goat. How long does this break? Assassin mark now. Man, 45 seconds. Never really realized how base, how long the base duration of Assassin's Mark is, because I just usually spam it for the damage. All right, we defeated the last Sith, who says these Sith shadows are proving quite the nuisance. I agree, game. It's likely that they are responsible for the disappearance of the men and women whose campsite you investigated earlier. As you take a look around the clearing, you notice several paths heading off in various directions. You'll need a, you'll need a way to determine which trail the Sith Shadows took their prisoners along. Perhaps if you could repair the scanner you examined back at the campsite, you could use it to identify which of the paths the Sith Shadows used. You should be able to scavenge some intact components from the broken droid near the scanner. Which, by the way, I like this big skeletal model. It's the same one I saw. They're really a camp. <laughs> then there's all these, like, bodies here. My question is, is, like, did the shadows find this creature's corpse and now they're just throwing bodies around it for, like, from sacrifices or something? Or is this, like, a makeshift graveyard? I don't know. What's the lore, man? What's the deep cut? Probably just that they thought it was cool, which you can't blame them. So here's this droid chassis. Let's click on that. Oh, I'm gonna scavenge components for 30 seconds. Oh, it's tear out droids innards. Sounds more violent than I think it needs to be, but we're about to get those parts. Yeah, all right, that's part one, baby. Time for part two. We gotta repair the scanner, so let's do that. Was it this one? Was it this one? Oh, it's this it's again the that scanner, the thing that says scanner on it. I don't know why. I thought it was like a data pad or whatever. Just by the way. Another 30 second channel. To be fair, I probably couldn't fix this thing in 30 seconds. So my immersions peak right now. Or the high, high immersion or high immersion bar. You insert the components you salvaged from the droid into the scanner and manage to repair its analysis module. With the scanner working, more or less, you should be able to trace the route the Sith Shadows took. Head back to the clearing and find those missing scientists. Okay. Are you shitting me? I was about to say, I don't think I'm going to get ambushed again, but... These guys are just... thirsty. One, not too bad. Two, kind of rough. I think, there again, there's going to be a part where there's three of them. That'll be a little spicy. But we'll see how it goes when we get there. All right, given we keep getting ambushed, I'm just going to assume this is also an ambush. So let's just be ready. My cloak. Head on over. Scooby-Doo Scooby -Doo on over. Jinkies gang. I hope there's no scary cultists. Yep, they are. And they're... Collecting sap from that tree, I guess. I can't see them? Oh, no. Okay, well, they came out. But my opener kind of ate shit, so... Oh, well. At least the quest didn't bug. <laughs> and at least there's only one of them. I'll, I'll take what I can get. All right, there's the la there's that guy. On to the next one, which is quite a bit further away on the other side of the mountain. We gotta go all the way around. I'm glad that I switched off that camo set. I need all the survivability I can get. <laughs> like again, a spy is more durable than I give it credit for. Like I I've always known, especially coming back to the game, that spy is definitely one of the more durable professions compared to others, right? But having now played it again i'm like wow yeah dang okay they're they're pretty chunky i get some good passives and good cooldowns outside of cloak and then cloak is this cherry on top right i wouldn't say they out tank the tankiest professions like jedi but they're pretty good 
All right, we're coming up on the next point, so I'm gonna, before I get uh, ambushed, just gonna, you know, preemptively pop off my speeder, slide into stealth mode. Uh, hopefully they don't all spawn inside a freaking tree. That's just Yavin things, though, you know what I mean? Got no action, and I got one guy left. Back to just stacking Razor Slash and using heals and Spy's Fang. Hey, Dark Trooper, why don't you walk over here and help out and fellow Imp? Huh? Or is there just no camaraderie here? Nah, you're just gonna stand there and watch me fight this cultist who's clearly probably working against the Imperial Empire's intentions? Alright, later. I think I think the programming on those guys could use some work. Oh, need to put assassin mark on. Oopsies. All right, now uh, we gotta go to path point four. Taking us around this mountain again. All right, so here we are coming up in path point four. Wow, that looks like the front door to like an evil temple or something. But I don't get jumped. Weird. All right, so now we've been updated to investigating the Germans. Find the scientists. We need to now locate the scientists within this temple. All right, so this is where things are going to change a little bit. So first upon entry, you're going to go over here and you're going to use the radial menu and use use this altar. This will give us a buff that will protect us from that stacking debuff. That stacking debuff is pretty nasty. It will um, basically make it so you're going to die fighting anything in here. This one lasts for nine minutes. And there's other altars throughout the area that you can use to refresh. So what we're going to do... Is a few things. First, I'm going to change from Breath of Heaven back to Akaragam for a speed boost. Second, we're going to get some insurance. So I'm going to take off one of these rings that I have on. I'm going to equip, if you all remember, big callback Mark of the Hero, which is if I die in here, I can use the restore life feature. I think it goes on a fairly long cooldown. I think on live it was a day. I don't know if I got reduced on Legends, but uh, nope, it says only once every 23 hours. All right, so it's still long. But we're going to equip that, because just in case I die, that gives me one get-out-of-jail-free card. Yeah, I'm going to be missing one ring, but that's okay, because as you see in here, there's a high probability of me dying, because not only are there a bunch of high-level cultists, including ones that are bossed here, like this dude right here, who has four, double the health of the guys that we were just fighting at 441,000. Uh, but you see, they got all these fun stealth scanners, like we saw earlier during the, uh, the Valerian theme park, and those will just keep firing off and decloaking my ass so the name of the game is dodging enemies so that's what we're going to be trying to do and we're just going to try and blitz through here again you might be able to do this on professions other than spy or jedi spy and jedi are the ones best known for being able to do this prerequisite of quests on their own i i just it's more fun with a friend Friday through here is actually kind of fun you get some good loot drops too but either way, uh, no more hesitation. I'm going to start cloaked. I'm going to start with a burst of shadows to see if I can at least get a little bit far in here. Nope, there goes the decloak. So there's combat. And now I'm going to activate sprint stim as a backup here. Only time I'm going to be able to use it is now. Let's go down the stairs. I'm going to run up here onto this middle platform. And then I'm going to stay to the right. The reason being is there's enemies on the side that I do not want to run through, especially the Minox. The Minox are scurry. And now we are no longer in combat. Next, I'm going to go back into stealth. That probably wasn't even necessary. I'm going to run down here on the right side. And we're just going to keep going. And this bridge is extremely dangerous. This is probably one of the most dangerous parts, in fact. Uh, yeah, you see a lot of them behind us. Sprint Stim's keeping us out ahead. But we're just going to run through here. Just keep running. Don't stop. Just don't stop. And then we're going to go up here on the right side. So we could avoid the enemies in the middle here. I do have my decoy. Should I need that? I have avoid damage if I want to tank some for a little while. And I finally do have smoke uh, grenade. Should I need just to straight up cloak it out of here. But we got a pretty good lead on the enemies that are still mad at us. So we're just going to keep running. They will drop eventually, like now. 
So as we came to this middle area, you saw me hang right or go to the east. That's where we could see our waypoint, so we're going to keep going this way. Going to run through this room. We are now getting attacked by these guys who cut up. We're going to stay to the left. Please stop zapping me. It is freaking rude. See if we can get by these guys. They might just attack me. That might have been a scanner. There's a scanners above me that you can't see. I'll just run through. Screw him. And we're going to run over here to the right. And we're going to run all the way down here this corner. And cloak. And then here's the scientist. Let's talk to them. He says, stay back. Just stay back. Calm down. It's all right. I'm here to rescue you. Rescue me. You're here too. Rescue me? Oh, thank the force. I thought these cis shadows would kill me like they did my colleagues. You're the only one left? Yes, the others were taken away one by one. We never saw any of them again. But we heard their screams. Such terrible screams. I removed the shackles from the scientists. I'll see if I can find out what happened to them. But that'll have to wait until you've gotten out of here. He says, thank you, don't worry about me, though. I'll sneak out of here. Just please find the other scientist. But okay, before we go to the last one, I'm definitely going to need smoke grenade, which there goes a scientist. Please don't get killed by all the dudes on the way out. Good luck. Oh, never mind. He's got better stealth technology than I do. I'm going to wait for my smoke grenade to get back because we're definitely going to need that for the next part. So for anyone watching YouTube, you're going to see this skip ahead all of a sudden. Okay, smoke grenade's back. Let's go. I mean, uh, yeah, you know what? Actually, let's try Burst of Shadows again. I'll probably just get decloaked by a sensor pretty quickly, but hey, whatever, man. Yep. That's okay. Again, I'm going to come down this ramp, save the right. So this time we're going to go back to that center area where we... that branched off into over here, and we're going to go north instead of east. You can kind of get that hint by the waypoint indicator, but I'll point that out again once we're there. All right, so we're going to stay to the right here, running around these pillars. Nope, someone still got mad at me, though. Rude. I'm going to try and avoid picking up more enemies than I need to, but... Be surprised if these guys attack me anyways. So this is why we needed the smoke grenade, because not only do I have to run through this group, but I have to run through these Minox, and these Minox are probably not gonna leave me alone. And like I said, these Minox are scurry. And goodbye. Wow. Was that latency, or were they in combat with my familiar? What the hell just happened to my HP? Uh, hold on. A force-corrupted salt Minoc attacks Vum with flank 3 and punishing blows. For 2,237 points. Uh, my armor absorbs 6,568 points out of an 8,800-point hit. Ouchies. Oh, and then, yeah. This Shadow Ritualist attacks Vum with a Dark Saber, punching blows for 2958. Armor absorbs 7300 of the 10,000 damage. Yeah, it's got hit with a bunch of punishing blows at the same time, and for some reason it put me cloak immediately. But that's why I had the Ring of Heroism on, because if I died here, uh, that would have been bad. Either way, I found the rest of the scientists. Oh, you have to speak to the Altar of Kazash. I just thought it was another altar. Upon a closer inspection of the altar, you notice what appears to be an ancient writing engraved on the, it. You get the feeling that this altar is somehow the cause of the ground quakes. Really? Okay, I got some good intuition. You're unable to recognize the language of the writing uses. How hopefully someone back at the Jedi Temple will be able to translate and decipher it. Take hollow images of the writing. You take your data pad and snap a few images of the writing. Now that you've discovered the cause of the ground quakes and what happened, the missing scientists, you should head back to the Jedi Temple and report what you've discovered. So... Before you all run out of here, what you're going to want to do is come to the end of the cave and you see this mysterious pylon? Click it. 
So the reason clicking this pylon is important is because it takes you to the second leg of the temple, which, as you can see, uh, goes down further in the cave, then branches off. We'll go take a look at it so you can all see what this looks like, which, by the way, here's another altar. So if you ever need to refresh your buff, there's another one to use. Okay, so as you come down here, you can see there's some Sith followers, and you can see there's some cool, like, Sith-looking temples down there. There's that one, and then over here, there's... It's down below. Yep, there's down there. And those are where the bosses are located. One in that temple over there with the red top, and then one down here, well, over here. And so this is where you would come to do the heroics. The first one being Kazash is down there on the right. So you would do Kazash, then you'd have to go do some pre-quests back in that main part of the temple that we were in earlier. Then you run down there and do Sinya, which is the second boss. But we're not doing that today. The main reason I you want to click that pylon before coming, before leaving that structure, is because this heroic area has Aurelia Travel, like the other heroics do. And the Aurelia Travel puts you at this pylon here in the second half. And if you don't click that first pylon to come to the second half, you won't have unlocked the Aurelia Travel even if you've completed the first part of this quest. So it's very important you do that. Else your group is going to be like, what the hell, man? You got to run through the whole temple now again? Jeez. But if you click that pylon again, you're put back outside. So let's go back over to the... Uh, what was it? Kamoval? Kamoval? Kamoval. Over in the light side Jedi Temple. And see what he has to say. We are back with Kamoval, who says... You're back. I'm glad you're safe. The scientist you rescued spoke with me upon returning to the temple. What possible reason could the Sith Shadows have for kidnapping a group of scientists? I think the answer to that question lies in the writing I found in the altar. The Sith Shadows were used to sacrifice scientists. Also, I forgot to mention. Uh, let me show you something really fast. So here are my instance lockout. You can see Vum is not flagged for... Because <laughs> I haven't gone on the Tuscan army yet, but we can go in. Lord Kazash and Sinya. Those are the two instances that this is pertaining to. Kazash and Sinya. But if I click the next option, he says, an altar. What do the writings say? I don't know. I'm not familiar with the language. I took hollow images of the writing. I was hoping you or someone else here in the temple would be able to translate it. Of course, if you upload the hollow images to my data pad, I'll run it through the translation matrix and we use to translate the writings we found here in the temple. So I transmit those images and Kama Vol spends a few minutes analyzing the images. So he runs them through his translated matrix. Eventually, his data pad beeps triumphantly to translate the writings. And Kamavol appears horrified by what they say. What is it? What's wrong? What does the writing say? The altar you found was created as a place of worship for a fearsome dark cider, the Dark Lord Kazash. I've never heard of the Dark Lord Kazash before. Once a powerful Sith Lord, Kazash fell victim to the machinations of his enemies. His body was transformed into a monstrous stone golem by a long forgotten Sith ritual and his soul exposed the depths of chaos, <laughs> capitals, which drove him mad. Fueled by his insanity, Kazash serves a new master in the hopes of transforming everyone in the galaxy into monsters like him. That's horrifying. Indeed, Kazash resides in the bowels of a nearby Sith temple. His continued existence spells doom for the denizens of Yavin 4 and the people of the galaxy. He must be dealt with. I will face him. I admire your bravery, but Kazash is too far too powerful for you to face alone. Gather your closest friends and your strongest allies. You will need their help to stand a chance against them. I understand. We'll face Kazash together and take him down. Good luck, my friend. If we bring up that instance window, though, we can now see that Kazash is no longer listed here. It's just Sinya. So I can now go into Lord Kazash instance. All right. So today we did Legends content. So we did the new Master Politician quest line. We did the Valerian theme park update. And we did the Jedi theme park uh Prequel quests, or not prequel, um, prologue quests. I think that's what they refer to it as. So, yeah, next time we're going to probably start getting into some more space-oriented things. It's been a while since we actually spent a bit of time up there in the stars of the Star War. But thank you very much. See you on the next one.